folks. Sorry for the minute delay. I was having a little bit of technical difficulty, but we're all set now. I hope everyone is doing well on day, who knows, but it was a beautiful day. I hope you got to go outside in the sunshine. I walked around a little bit with Prescott earlier and it was really, really nice. I actually even got to go down to Rehoboth and visit David and Brandon down at their house, my first time there. Prescott and Tegan got to be reunited. It was really, really adorable. But let's go ahead and get started with class. So tonight we're going to be going over a basic standing sequence. It'll be about an hour, 60 to 75 minutes or so. So we'll just start off with some seated breath. Find a comfortable seat. Allow yourself to sit back. Make sure you're not leaning forward. Allow your weight to come back more into the hips. Lift the chest, draw the shoulders back. Let me do a deliberate roll or two back with the shoulders. Just start off slowing down and deepening the breath. gentle pranayama breath practice called Samavritti, the breath of equal waves or equal duration. So we'll just take a silent count on your own, maybe four, five, six, whatever number works for you as you inhale, filling up, and then just match that same number on an exhale. So we're making the inhales and exhales about the same length, without any holds or gaps or pauses in between. Just a steady, deep breath in. Equally long, steady breath out. For the last few rounds of this breath, if you find it interesting to do so, just add a count of one or two to both sides of the breath. So lengthening of the inhales and exhales, but again to the same degree.
gently open the eyes and shift into your child's pose. So through your hands and knees, just pressing back, it's towards the heels, your knees can be separated as much as you'd like, but just stretch the arms out, really extending, you can shift a little bit as you settle back into your child's pose. If child is tight because of tight quads around the knees, you can just keep the hips a little bit higher, maybe rest more on your forearms with your arms bent. There's no need to push yourself back to the heels if that's uncomfortable for your joints. And just resting the forehead towards the floor if you can, or on the backs of the hands. Just give yourself a few breaths in your child's pose. Let yourself fully rest. Allow your focus on the sensation of your breath to spread more into the back of the body. As you inhale, feeling, filling up through the back of the ribs, feel those spread. And as you exhale, just soften down into your child's pose. Just a few breaths here. Child's pose, just walking your hands over to the right, coming into side child's. Your hands will both leave the mat, reaching a little longer through your left arm. Just getting a little bit extra stretch and space in your left side. Maybe now the sensation of your breath is spreading more into the left side of the ribs and around the left waist. Walk your hands back through center and over to the other side as your hands leave the mat off to the left, reaching a little longer through your right arm, allowing that right side waist to get a little bit more space. And then walk yourself back to center. Bring your hands back under your shoulders and come up into tabletop. So on your hands and knees, make sure that your knees are separated at least hips width. Bring your left hand a little more towards the center of the mat under you. Reach your right arm up straight into the air. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, thread the right arm underneath you to the left, allowing your shoulder to come down. Then place your left hand on the ground, just coming into a shoulder twist. Reaching out through that right arm, pressing back gently into your left hand, turning the chest towards the side wall, up away from the floor. If you feel unsteady, you can widen your knees a little bit. But try your best to maintain the breath, even with the depth of the twist. If your shoulder's not quite on the ground, you can always get more space between your upper body and the legs. That usually helps. side. And then as you exhale, come back to center. Before the second side, give yourself a few rounds of cat-cow. So as you inhale, look forward, lift the tailbone, arch the back. And as you exhale, round the spine towards the ceiling, dropping the head gently. And just back and forth, flexing and extending through your back. Then come back to center. Bring your right hand a little more towards the middle, reach your left arm up, and then thread the left arm under you to the right, allowing your left shoulder to come to the ground. Place your right hand on the floor, and just gently use your right arm to help you twist open to the side. And you can always widen the knees, but breathe, and think about lengthening along your spine. That's what twists help us do. They help give us length.
Breathing as deeply into the twist as you can. Then unwind back to center. Again, taking a few rounds of cat cow, just to release that side of the twist. Inhale, looking forward. Exhale, rounding the back. Just back and forth a few times, loosening it up. And then tuck your toes, spread your hands nice and wide, and press back into your downward facing dog. Give yourself a couple breaths, maybe pedal it out, especially if you've been sitting quite a bit today. I hope you did get to get, go outside though on such a beautiful day. But in any case, maybe stretching back one heel to the floor at a time, getting the stretch as long in the back of the leg as you can. Make sure the fingers are spread nice and wide, palms spread. And once you're holding your downward facing dog, a few big waves. You can think of it as a giant whole body cat cow. Lift the heels, tuck your tailbone round forward past your high plank, lengthen out as you lower halfway. Use the knees on the ground if you need to. From chaturanga to forward facing dog, open up. And exhale up and back, downward facing dog. Again, lift your heels, tuck the tailbone, hollow the belly and chest in as you round forward. Once you pass the wrist, lengthen the spine, lower halfway by bending your elbows. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time, smoothly through, lift up, round your way forward, lengthen out, strengthen down towards the floor, then lift up, and exhale, pull it back, downward dog. From here, simply lift your right leg into the air, fold the knee into the chest as you round forward, stay as high as you can, keep the hips lifted, inhale, reach it back, extend, three-legged dog, exhale, right knee into the chest, bring it forward, lift up, tuck the leg in, inhale, reach it out, one more time, tuck the knee into the chest, round forward, step your foot inside the right thumb, and lift up to your high lunge. Facing forward, bend the back knee a little bit to really keep that left hip facing forward so the whole torso is facing the same direction. Try your best to keep your weight centered so you're not leaning too much forward into that front leg. Bend the knee to drop your center of gravity straight down along the tailbone. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, dip the back knee almost to the mat, round over the front thigh, but stay shifting backwards a little bit into your legs. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, dip and round. Inhale, lift. Exhale, dip down, round in, shift back. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, dip and shift back. Again, lift, inhale. Exhale, dip it in, shift backwards. Inhale, lift up. This time, bring your hands to your heart. Look forward for your balance. Shift up onto your front leg. Breathe, Divasana or Warrior Three variation. Just take a couple moments to balance, turn that left thigh to the ground, spiral the leg back, pull the belly in. Replace the toes, the hands, and just step right into Downward Dog. Pedal it out. And then lift your left leg, and knee to nose. Tuck in, round forward, lift up. Inhale, reach it back, three-legged dog. Lift, tuck that left leg in, round your way forward. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, lift, tuck it in, round forward. Step the foot inside the thumb and come up into that high lunge on the second side. Give yourself a little space side to side if you need to. Turn that right hip forward, soften the back knee, get your weight centered between your legs. Take a deep breath, and exhale, dip the back knee round over your front thigh. Inhale, lift up, exhale, dip, round in. Again, lift it up, exhale, dip it in, and lift, and dip in. Again, lift, just one more time, dip it in, round the spine. Inhale, lift it up, 
bring your hands to your heart, look forward, start to float up onto that front leg, turn the right thigh towards the ground, spiral the leg into the air behind you, hug your belly in. Touch the toes down, the hands down, and step right into downward dog. Again, pedal it out, just take a breath. And then slowly start to walk your feet up to your hands. Flat back at the front and fold over your legs. Inhale all the way up to standing, reach your arms up overhead. And exhale, hands to heart, stepping the feet together at the front of your mouth. For some sun skis or flowing versions of suns, inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale to a flat back. Send your right leg back as you set the knee down, reach up, inhale to a lunge. Exhale, the hands down, step back to plank. Lower halfway, chaturanga. Forward facing dog, lift up. Exhale, pull back, down dog. Lift your right leg, step forward, set the left knee down. Lift the arms as you inhale into lunge. And then hands down, step forward, feet together, lengthen out, and fold down. Inhale to rise, and hands to heart. Again, inhale, reach up, and exhale, fold down. Lengthen, left leg goes back, knee down, arms rise, low lunge. And then set the hands down, step back to plank, and lower halfway. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg and step it forward. Set your right knee down. Arms rise. Hands come down. Step forward to the front of your mat and fold over your legs. Inhale to stand and hands to heart. Now bend your knees and sit back into chair pose. Take a deep breath in and exhale, fold forward. Flat back, and then step back to your plank. Draw forward as you lower halfway, bending over your elbows. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Downward dog, lift your right leg, and step forward into your high lunge. Reach your arms up. Interlace your hands overhead, turn the palms to the sky, soft the back knee like we did before, leaving the chest back. We're just going to take 25 short, quick Kabbalah exhales here. So begin. And rest that, hands to heart. And twist to your right, bringing your left elbow over the right thigh. Use the hands to help press down, lift the chest up in line with the thumbs, open the shoulders back away from the ears. If you need to set the back knee down, you can always set the back knee down. Holding nice and steady. We're twisting, so again, think about lengthening along your spine rather than rounding over the thigh. Then lift up to your high lunge. Lift out the hips a little and open to warrior two, facing the left. Right leg is forward, knee and shin are in line with the toes. Arms extended, but relaxed through the shoulders, not hiked up. Spread the fingers, but not too crazy wide. And settle into the strength of that front leg. Make sure you've got weight and heel, and you're not falling into the toes. Get a little squeeze between your legs, so the inner line of that back leg is fired up too. Reverse. And side angle. Come forward onto your thigh, bring the left arm along your ear. Make sure if you're staying on your elbow, you keep the shoulder down away from the neck. You're not sliding forward into that shoulder. Those of you that like to bind, you can take a half bind, bring your left hand behind your back and just open the chest. If you happen to be able to slide your right arm under the leg, reach back and link your hands outside the hip, you can twist open a little bit more. But if this bothers your elbows or wrists, don't worry about the bind. Try to maintain that deep, steady breath.
Release whatever bind you have, bring the hands to the ground, lift your back heel to set the knee down, slide the knee back to lengthen your stride, lean into your left hand for a twisting quad stretch, walk your right foot to the right, turn the toes out, and two options, bring your right hand to the inner thigh by the knee, lean back from it, tuck your back toes, and lift the knee, and twist into this open lunge, or keep the knee down, reach back, grab the foot with your right hand, and start to draw towards your hip. If it comes close, bring it to the left hip, not crossing over to the right. And make sure you're lifting up out of that bottom shoulder. Deep, full breath. Open the space in the upper chest between your collarbones. And then let it go, plant your hands. Step back, lower halfway. Inhale, forward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your left leg and step forward into your high lunge on the second side. Lift your arms, settle into your legs. Again, shift your weight back a little bit so you're more straight up and down, not leaning. A little length of the tailbone. Interlace your hands overhead, turn the palms to the sky. We'll do that breath again. So 25 Kabbalabhati breaths. to the ground, lift the back heel to set the knee down, slide it back, lean into your right hand, walk your left foot out, turn the toes out, again two options, tuck the toes, hand on your thigh, lift the knee and turn open, or reach back with your left hand, grab the foot and draw it in, don't slide into your bottom shoulder, lift that right chest up, and breathe.
next breath, soften. And hopper step to the front, coming through your flat back into your forward fold. Bend your knees down through chair pose and stand up hands to heart. Take a breath, take a drink of water. Especially if you've been talking this whole time with me. So for the next sequence, we'll start right from our chair pose down into Utkatasana. Stay in chair, so you bend to the legs, bring your hands to your heart, and twist to your right, bring your left elbow over the right thigh. Like before, maybe a fist with one hand, cup of the top palm, press down into the leg to lift the chest higher, but look down for stability. Lift your left heel up, test your balance. Maybe step that left foot all the way back into your twisting lunge, find the twist again. And then inhale, lift up through high lunge, and open to warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Straighten your front leg out. And then pivot forward, pull your hips back as you reach long through your right side, allowing your right hand to come down to the floor. Maybe put a block under your hand. If you need to step your back foot closer in, you can. As you twist open, maybe reach up. You can look in any direction that works for your neck. Looking up sometimes is too tight. up to a partial flat back for twisting triangle. Bring your left hand in towards the foot, maybe across it. Right hand can come to the hip, press that right hip crease back. Maybe reach the right arm up or it can stay at the hip. Keep your legs nice and engaged. Don't throw all your attention into the spinal twist or up into that top arm. Stay nice and strong and steady in your legs. Always start the pose with your base, which here is the feet, the legs, and the hips. Through that left arm, 
turn those right toes in a little bit, adjust the width or the distance of the legs as you twist yourself open. Doing your best to keep that front foot solid. So try not to roll to the outer edge of the front foot. Keep the big toe mount grounded. And then from there, open that right hip on the right side. of breath moving through the back of your body. Soften a little. Bring your right hand closer to the foot or higher on your support or block. Maybe across. Left hand can come to the hip, press it back. Keep this whole left leg in line. Don't let your hips shift off to one side or the other. Keep the left hip behind the heel. So you've got a nice single plane here on your left side. Maybe the left arm reaches up, and it doesn't have to. You can keep the hand on the, the hip. Keep the emphasis down in your legs. Maybe a nice IT band stretch up the outside of your left leg into the hip. both hands down, step forward to your flat back, and fold. Inhale, round your way up, and hands to heart. Again, chair twist, sit down, reach up, hands to heart, twist to your right, holding nice and steady. This time, just for a moment, really test your stability. Get a squeeze between your legs, but don't let your knees touch. So don't collapse inwards. Squeeze your feet towards each other to the mat, but keep your knees a little separately. Look down, stay nice and steady, hug your belly in. Lift your right heel up, and then lift the right knee up into the elbow as you stand up, holding contact, squeezing the elbow into each other. And then carefully set it down. Now lift your left heel like you did before. Step back into your twisting lunge. Open up. Lift into high lunge. Open to warrior two. Reverse your warrior. And come forward into side angle again. And then nice and steady into your side angle. And shorten that top side, lengthen your bottom side, reach your right arm forward in line with the left like you're grabbing the invisible beach ball between the arms, but not straight forward to the upper corner of the room in front of you. So shorten that left shoulder to the hip, lengthen your right side out, look nice and strong on both sides. Look down to the upper right corner for half moon, pull the back leg up into the air, your right fingertips can be on the ground. They can be on a block, they can be floating. Flex the lifted foot, engage the legs and the arms. If you sag over the standing leg, it'll pull you off balance. So really use the lifted leg like a rudder. Let it help hold you up. Carefully come back to your warrior two. Hands to hips, 
Step your feet a little closer together as you turn to face forward, as if we were setting up the pyramid again. But this time, bring your hands to your heart, look forward for a balance point, and start to float up onto your right leg for your warrior three. You can bend the standing knee to get that left hip down. And for a revolved half moon, start to reach your to the floor, the better balance. The higher it is, the more you really want to open the hip and work the thigh in. Zip up your midline. Maybe spread the arms. And then bring the hands back to the heart, cross the ankle over the front of your thigh, make a figure four, and then start to squat down into your standing leg. Hands can stay at the heart as you shift your hips back, maybe hands to knee and ankle. <laughs> Keep your balance. Maybe elbows to knee and ankle. And then 
carefully stand up. If you need to step down for a second, step down. Otherwise, grab a hold of your right ankle with your right hand. Left ankle and left hand. Coming into your dancer pose. Press back, half dancer or standing low. Not a deep back bend, just a balance. And then as you stand up, cross that left knee over the right one, bend your standing leg. Twining, if you can, or just bring the foot to the side of the leg. Bring yourself back to center if you shifted like me. Left arm over right, full eagle. Unwind, shake it out, and take a couple breaths. Tree on the second side. Shift your weight to the left and bring your right foot up. Fix your gaze at something unmoving. Maybe spread the arms out. to heart, cross the ankle over the thigh, make your figure forward, and start to squat back into the leg. Again, hands to the leg, maybe the elbows, maybe the chest. Stay as high as you need to, especially for that knee. Shifting back into this deep stretch for the right hip. Dancer, grab your right ankle and your right hand, send the foot back, reach your left arm forward. Again, just a little balance challenge, not really a deep back bend. Just hinge over your standing leg. And then cross that right knee over the left one. Right elbow over left. Combine your eagle. transferring weight from your hands to your feet, back and forth. Maybe after that, we get a little bit of a kick of the heels towards the heel. So coming into your Uttanasana, our four full. Walk your hands a little bit out in front of you. Spread your fingers, get those base knuckles really grounded into the mat. Get a little grip with your fingertips. Shift your weight back into the heels, loosen the toes. And then as you shift forward, lift your heels, push the ground away through the arms, relax your neck. Again, shift back. Shift forward, lift the heels, pull the belly in, push the ground away. So you're lifting and rolling up. You're not just trying to kick up. Lean forward, lift the heels, push the ground away. Shift back. Lean forward. Maybe get now a little bit of a kick of the heels to the hips. It's not dramatic. You're just lifting the feet off the ground. Get steady in the arms, push, heels up, feet down. Do that a couple more times. Maybe start to get a little bit of a float. You don't have to stick the feet up to the sky. They can start to go up, but that's the last piece. The feet aren't really all that important. It's just gentle and soft and easy. You can try that a couple times if you'd like. Again, maybe it's just rocking back and forth. Maybe it's a little hop. Maybe it's a little float up into the air. Once you've given that a try a couple of times, maybe you roll the wrists out afterwards. 
then we're going to meet up on the ground. Feet together at the front, single vinyasa, arms rise, and forward fold. Left back, then step or float your way back to downward dog, chaturanga, always optional, you can just step right into downward dog. From downward dog, you can jump through to seated, or simply set the knees down, cross your ankles to sit back, scoot forward, and come all the way down onto your back. We're going to do a couple strength exercises followed by some back bends. So if you prefer bridge with a block or support, maybe a bolster, if you have something like that at home, just set it to your side. I'm going to do this without because I know a lot of you don't have props at home. Although since this is probably going to last a little while, not class, but this situation, you might want to go online and buy some blocks. Just saying. So we'll do a little glute work. Set up as if for bridge to start. Touch the tips of your fingers to the backs of your heels. But then walk your feet a little bit forward so you can't touch them anymore. And then a little bit wider, just a touch wider, not a lot. Roll your shoulder blades a little bit underneath you. Make sure your heels are planted, so lift your toes up. I have to do this in class too, check with everyone. Toes are up, not heels. It's weirdly habitual for people to lift their heels and back bends. That's a lot of weakness in the back of your leg and in your adductors. Ground your heels, use the back of your legs, flatten the back to start if you need to. And then peel the hips up into a low bridge. Not really going for a deep arch so you can get your shoulders under you a little more for support. And then we'll do this with the breath. So lower the hips almost to the floor on inhale. As you exhale, lift the hips, pull your heels back towards you, and squeeze your legs towards each other without letting the knees dip in. So pull your heels towards each other and back towards you. Inhale, relax almost all the way down. Exhale, squeeze the heels in and back as you lift up your tail. Inhale, relax the legs, it's almost all the way down. Exhale, lift up, squeeze, pull back. Inhale, relax almost all the way. Exhale, squeeze, pull back, tuck tail. And relax down almost all the way. Exhale, squeeze, pull back, lift the hips. A couple more times. Let it come down. Lift it back up, squeeze, engage. And again, down one more time. Squeeze and lift up. Let it come all the way down. And just relax, maybe once you wipe your knees a little bit side to side. Now for those of you at home, if you are going to order blocks and some more props, you can have a really full practice at home. I know it's not very yogic, but what does that mean? But getting one of those loop resistance bands, they usually come in colors that are about two to three inches wide, green, blue, yellow, they're different tensions. You can put one of those bands around your thighs to get extra work for your glutes in this sort of work. But we're going to pretend we had an elastic band around the outsides of the legs, kind of holding our knees parallel. And similar to the last exercise, as we lift up, instead of pulling inwards between the feet, we're going to push a little bit outwards, like the legs were going to go out, but it will resist your own efforts. More isometric, although there is some movement. And you may see what I mean, but it's not just flapping the legs side to side with the hips going up and down. It's tension to lift and relax. Tension to lift and relax. So lift your hips into that low bridge, same as before. Inhale to let the hips come almost all the way down. As you exhale, pull the heels back, but let the knees almost try to go out. Relax down. Exhale, open, tuck tail. And relax down. Remember, you're imagining pushing out into resistance. Press up and down. And press up and down. This one may be more abstract, but you'll get it. And lift and down. And lift. And down. It's almost like you're trying to duck toe the feet, but you're not letting them. And up. And down. And up. 
Two more times, down, and lift up, tuck the tail, and down. One more time, lift it up, and then down. Point your white with the knees again. Now lift your knees up over the hips, feet up in line with the knees. Lift your head, interlace your hands behind the head, draw your elbows together. Curl, head, chest, and shoulders up off the floor as you get stronger. Stay off your shoulder blades the whole time. So we're not going to be rocking side to side with the body, kicking our legs out. That does nothing. Maybe after you do 200 of those, you might get your abs engaged, but it's inefficient and you might as well just be sitting in front of a television. Well, not, not that bad, but you know. Lift the feet up. Press your low back into the floor. Curl up off your shoulder blades. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, extend your right leg forward and lift the chest up towards your left knee. Not the elbow. Don't lean onto your left shoulder. Stay up towards the left knee. Come back to center. Inhale. Exhale. Extend left leg. Lift your chest towards the right knee. And back to center. Inhale. Exhale. Extend right leg. Lift up to the left. But stay off both shoulders. Inhale down to center. Exhale, left leg extends, lift up, chest towards right knee. And back to center. Right leg out, lift chest towards left knee. And back to center, inhale. Exhale, left leg out, lift up to the right knee. And back to center. Right leg out, lift up to the left. And center. Left leg out, lift up to the right. Come back to center, straighten both legs up to the sky, stay off your shoulders, take a deep breath. Exhale, lift your elbows, lift the hips. Inhale, partially down. Exhale, lift hips, toes to the ceiling, elbows to the ceiling, and down, inhale. Exhale, lift up, belly down, and down. Exhale, lift, toes to the ceiling, elbows to the ceiling, and down. Now bend your knees, bring your elbows and knees to touch, and we'll pulse them together for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and relax. Hands to the ground, make sure wipe your knees a little side to side, soft on the belly again. And then we'll do three back bends, bridge and wheel. Feel free to do any combination. Stay with bridge. You can take supported bridge with a support under your hips the whole time and just enjoy it. Otherwise, we'll just start with an active bridge. If you feel like starting with a wheel, I'm gonna trust you to know your own body. Hands by the heels. We drop our arms down into the ground and lift your hips. You can roll your shoulders under. You can clasp your hands. I don't often find that useful. Just press the upper arms into the mat, arch the chest, work the feet solidly into the floor. There's just as much pull back to the feet as there is push forward, so ideally straight down. Roll the chest open. Make sure the neck is fairly relaxed. And breathe here. The heart is going back, the knees are going forward a little. Think of lifting the upper thighs towards the ceiling. Tailbone long, lower, upper, middle, low back down. Take a couple breaths. And then back bend two. If you're staying in bridge, repeat or slide a support under your hip once you lift. If you're coming to wheel, make it a gentle one to start. Brush your heels, then maybe bring your hands out by the shoulders. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Get your hands solid into the floor, the feet solid into the floor. And then curl the hips up, open your chest, and give yourself a few breaths. Gently bring your 
down, upper, middle, low back down, take a couple breaths. And then one more. Wheel or bridge. And a lot of my students are probably stunned to see me do a wheel. Obviously, I'm not a deep backbender, but every once in a while, it's good for me. So you can repeat wheel, you can take a bridge. Hands by the heels or by the shoulders. Take a deep breath. And lift yourself up. Supine twist just to relieve the back bend. Just a couple breaths here. We're not in full rest yet. And then off and over to the other side. Now I'm going to bring us up into pigeon next. If you feel like staying on the back, or you usually modify with figure four, just stay here, cross your ankle over the left thigh, and hug the leg in and enjoy the hip stretch, or just keep the left leg on the ground and relax. Otherwise, rock up, step back to your downward facing dog, lift your right leg, shake it out a little bit if you need to, and then turn the left hip towards the ground. Take your time, use a prop underneath your right hip if you need to, maybe something soft if a block is too much. And then the toes tucked a little bit so you can shift yourself back. And then maybe start to rest down into that hip stretch. And a good place to reconnect with the sensation of breath moving in and out of the back of the ribcage. Carefully come up onto your hands. Then sit onto your right hip. Swing that left leg forward. Left leg extends, right foot comes to inner thigh. Open the hips for twisting Janu Shashasana. Bring your left hand or elbow down to the inside of the leg. As you twist open, reach the right arm up overhead. And just come into a seated side bend. Doesn't matter if you touch the foot, you can stay as high as you need to stay. Just switch sides. It's coming back into your downward facing dog, pedal it out. Otherwise, the left knee comes forward to the left wrist, find an angle back, square the body off, stay as high in the arms as you need to, just prop under your elbows if you'd like. And as you bring yourself down, Nice. 
relax your deeper breath. Carefully sit up. Fine. Open the hips a little though for the side bend. You can adjust so that you're sitting up on the hips. Bring the just think of pulling up out of that left waist. We're going to come onto the back one more time. Hug the knees in, rock a little side to side. If you'd like, you can take a brief happy baby. Bring your knees down to the side, grabbing both of the ankles, the heels, maybe just behind the thighs. Depends where you are in your practice. You can shift a little bit side to side. Into your Shavasana. Put your arms and your legs a little bit out to the sides. You can cover yourself with a blanket or something if you're a little chilly. Just allow yourself to start to grow heavy down to the floor. Relax your face. Soften your jaw. Release the muscles around your eyes. Just let any expression of slack off the face. Let yourself be heavy. Give yourself these few moments of rest. Feel free to just stay and rest as long as you'd like. Otherwise, you can start to move the fingers and toes. And stretch the toes forward, reach the hands back, and lengthen out. Keeping your eyes closed, carefully curl up onto either side. And then use the arms and press your way up to a seated position. Soften your shoulders, allow yourself to sit back. If you're up with me, we'll take one more breath together. If you're still lying down in Shavasana, please enjoy your rest. Otherwise, one more breath together, inhale. Hold the breath in, take in a little more air. 
hold it. Relax your shoulders. And exhale. Namaste. Thank you all again so much for sharing practice tonight for standing sequence at my usual Friday 4.30. My next one, as I promised, I am recording the Yoga Nidra. I did so the other day. I don't like the way it came out, so I'm re-recording it. I will release it this weekend, I promise. Teacher trainees, I hope you enjoyed the standing flow from my perspective. I know David did it the other day. Um, continue to take care of yourselves. Continue to take care of each other. Reach out if you need support or help. We're all here for you. South Boston Yoga has an amazing community. We built for 12 years, thousands of incredible students, all within reach to our amazing social media so feel please feel free to reach out again donations are welcome thank you so much for all of you who have donated to Venmo my Venmo is tscopeland74 all the teachers are posting in their individual videos please find us online and peace I'll see you soon